channel. As you can tell from the title, today we are going to be going over my no buy list for 2024. I attempted one last year, inspired by our dear friend Cassie Thorpe. It was like 50% successful. Granted, it was my first year doing it. There were a couple of things that I did succeed at, but I have a new list for 2024, and I also wanted to give some tips on creating your own no buy list if anyone is interested. Also wanted to flag that I have been sick since Christmas. And so if I still sound a little congested, that is why. But wanted to put this video out there while I'm also doing my no buy January, which means I am not shopping for like clothes or shoes or anything like that. And so we're just going to get started. I mentioned this in my last video that I wanted to do a no buy January to just kind of do a bit of a consumer detox. So far, so good. I have just created a list of things that have been catching my eye. And I think it's a great time of the year to do it because after all of the sales and the holidays, all the gift guides, granted, use a gift card if you want, but it's been really good to just not add to cart and check out, like with the, all within like five minutes. The holidays is typically when I am doing the most cleaning and reorganizing, especially after we put away the decorations. And that just forces me to pretty much go through everything in the house. And once I set aside the things that I know that I no longer want or need, I set things aside for donation, I set things aside for family and friends, set some things aside to sell. And if I see that there's too much of like one thing, then I will force myself to pick favorites from that because I don't want anything in my closet that is competing against each other. And that helps me get a little bit more mileage out of the pieces that are in my closet because I'm not being distracted by something shiny and new and then forgetting about something like, oh, I forgot I even had that. And after we cleaned and decluttered and set things aside, I looked at things in my closet that I just want to get more use out of. And then I actually ended up booking a session with Allison who helped me kind of rediscover different ways to style things in my closet and try my best to just figure out new ways on how to piece certain things in my wardrobe that maybe I wouldn't have seen before. And so it was really cool to see it from someone else's perspective. I do recommend picking up her book, Wear It Well. This is not sponsored whatsoever, but this is really helpful in like figuring out what pieces actually need to exist in my wardrobe and what does not. If you don't know where to start with your no buy list, assess what you purchased in the recent year and see what you maybe have too much of and that's usually a good place to start, which brings me to number one on my list, sunglasses. I think last year I added a few pairs. Um, Gentle Monster in particular has been a huge weakness of mine because I love their glasses. I always need a pair of sunglasses with any outfit if I'm out, but I do wanna just get more use out of the ones that I already have in my closet. And so I did a huge purge of sunglasses where I took out anything that maybe I don't really gravitate towards anymore. I need to actually schedule a call with like the real real and consign some pieces. But that is the first thing on my list. And I know it's gonna be a huge challenge, but I think I want to do my best with that one. I feel like I set myself up for failure with that first one, but we'll see. Again, major shout out to Cassie Thorpe for inspiring me to do this. And it is now going to be an annual habit to just force myself to really think about what pieces I purchase this year. Next up is neutral home decor. And for this, I put this because I really want to focus on art this year. There are maybe like three zones in the house that I want to incorporate art, but I have just been so picky about it. I've debated on like making my own piece because I want it to be a specific color. So we'll have to see about that. I just want to add more warmth and texture and color to the home. Maybe like a wallpaper. Again, we want to redo the bathroom, but we'll see where the year takes us. So that is number two for my list. Number three, we have sneakers and in particular designer sneakers. And I succeeded at this last year. It was like one of those things where like I had bought Dior sneakers, I had bought Chanel sneakers, and it was just one of those things where I was like, okay, Alyssa, you don't need these. You don't need any more of what you already have. And so I'm glad that I succeeded on that. I also am adding no more Sambas to this list because 
I have mine that I wear on repeat. I added a few colors, but I'm still going for the classic ones. And so I don't need to add any more. Sambas were a great purchase because I did get a lot of use out of them. I just don't necessarily need to add any more because obviously I have my go-to. And when you're just shopping in general, you wanna make sure that you're adding pieces into your wardrobe that won't compete with something else. If it ends up replacing something, then take that other piece out of your wardrobe. It's also good as you are going through your closet, if you're editing it, to make note of what pieces are missing from your closet. Next up, we have sweats and workout clothes. I have a certain section in my closet that is just for sweatpants. I added enough during the pandemic. I have a drawer for all of my leggings and workout clothes, and I just don't need to add any more because they are at capacity. And I don't want to overstuff my wardrobe. I want everything to be neat and tidy and organized when I open it. And so that is why we are keeping that on the list. That was on my 2023 list. Designer logo belts. And I really should have learned my lesson with the Gucci Marmont, but not doing the logo belts anymore. And this, I need to carry this on beyond just 2024. I want good quality belts that are just simple, nice. And I think in general too, while we're on this topic, is gold accessories for me. I've been a heavy gold girly for so many years. And I was originally a silver and white gold girl. And then things switched to gold. And now, I think I'm in my mixing metals era. Honestly, the mini Kelly is what did this for me. And after I got that bag, I realized how much I just still love silver hardware. I think it just leans things a little bit more casual and it'll be really nice to switch things up in that way. No more logo belts, no more gold belts, no more gold accessories. Silver accessories, I will add. These earrings that I'm wearing right now are ring concierge. I'm entering a new era and I think this is what's also helping my wardrobe and outfit ideas moving forward. The incorporation of silver accessories and mixing metals as well. Uh, next, we have perfume. And the only thing that I buy when it comes to perfume are refills of my travel size ones. I have like my favorites from Celine, Byredo, Erin, and those are typically my go-tos. My longest running fragrance has got to be Mojave Ghost. Like that has been a favorite of mine for so long. Next up, we have high maintenance clothing. And I've tried to be very selective about the pieces that I am buying. I checked to see how it is meant to be cleaned, but I did also invest in an LG styler. We haven't used it yet, I still need to set it up, but this is going to be great for coats or pieces that maybe I don't want to send to the dry cleaners. Maybe I wore a coat to Korean barbecue and I can't get the smell out. This is gonna be perfect for that, and I will be doing a review on this once I have more time with it. Do not pay full price, wait for like, Labor Day sales or anything like that because it was about, I think it was like a thousand dollars off. Next is an easy one, or what I hope will be an easy one, and that is SLGs. I added a Calvi last year. I also got the Silver Bottega card holder. I'm good, I'm cut off. I do not need any more card holders. This is gonna be a hard no for me unless I am buying for a giveaway, and that's it. Next, notebooks, I have tons. I don't need them, that's it. I don't have any other explanation. I get so caught up in stationary stores, but I just have like one brand of notebook that I really genuinely love. I'll have a link to it. And I didn't realize I had a stash of it, I guess. Like I realized how much I loved it and I just bought them in bulk. But yeah, um, there is no risk of me running out of paper for this year. Keep that on the list. The only thing that will be an exception for me is if Mark and I go back to Japan because I found a notebook there that I, actually it should be on Amazon. I should be fine. I'm not gonna run out of paper this year. I need to go through my other ones first. Do you see how easy it is to like forget about a no buy list? I literally just wrote this a week ago. Tote bags, thin flimsy ones, little souvenir ones. I mean, we have tons in the basement, but when we have family and friends that are going through the beauty bin, they also take a tote bag. So we're good on that. We are lessening the amount of tote bags that we have in the house. Almost done. Organizers before decluttering. I would always get so excited at the container store, 
but I've been really good about only buying containers and bins and boxes for things if I know exactly where they're going and how they're gonna fit. First up, get rid of the excess. You don't need containers for things you're not realistically gonna be keeping. And I feel really good about where we'll be in terms of organizing and decluttering this year. Last but not least are blazers. Piggybacking off of Cassie's video, in particular, black blazers, hard no. A tuxedo jacket has been on my list, so that's the only exception I will grant myself. But for the most part, yeah, I think I'm pretty solid with my blazers. I have also been just a lot more picky about blazers. I don't wanna do any more super oversized ones. I guess I'm just stacking on what was on my list last year, which were oversized blazers. And I think that's pretty much it for my list. I need to start editing this video because this needs to go live in about six hours. So let's hope that I can get it done in time. And thank you so much to everyone who had such nice things to say about my intros from the last video. I love you all. Your love and support mean the world to me and I will see you in the next video. Bye.